Okay, now we're dividing fractions and mixed numbers. This is lesson 70. And of course, if you become lost or confused or you've missed some videos, check the description for links. And just as addition and subtraction are inverse operations of each other, you know, they undo each other. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. 5 times 3 equals 15. We can take that 15 and divide it by the 3 and get the 5 again. See? So we're going to use this inverse relationship to divide fractions. We can divide fractions by flipping one of the fractions and then just multiplying as usual. So if we have 3 fourths divided by 1 half, we flip this one as a 2 over a 1, and we replace the division sign with a multiplication symbol. So now we have 3 times 2, which is 6, over 4 times 1, which is 4, so that's 6 fourths. We can also do the cross-canceling that we learned how to do. There's 1 2 in a 2, and there's 2 2's in a 4, so this could be crossed out as a 1, and that could be crossed out as a 2. Now we do 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 1 is 2. We don't have to reduce so much because we cross-canceled, and 3 halves is the same thing as 1 and a half. If any part of this confused you, you got ahead of yourself and you need to go back and watch the beginning of lesson 7, okay? You got too far ahead. This is 7D. And we've already done 7 A, B, and C, okay? There's links in the description. So the number being divided has to be written first. That's really important. The 3 fourths is being cut in half, see? So the 3 fourths has to be written first and then we continue on and flip the fraction and change it to multiplication and do it. Okay, so make sure that the dividend, the number being divided, is first. The divisor, the one that's going into it, is second. Okay? Also remember that if you have something split into equal groups and you have all of those equal groups, those equal parts, you have one whole. So if you have something split into three parts and you have all three parts, you have the whole thing. Right? So any fraction with the same numerator or denominator equals one whole. That's how we got that three halves to become a one and a half. We pulled the two halves out of it and had the two halves became a one whole. All right, so we had one and a half. Okay, so Tala has a ribbon that is two yards long. So if this is a yard and this is a yard, and she cuts it into one fourth yard pieces. So that means this yard is cut into one-fourth pieces and this yard is cut into one-fourth yard pieces. See, because it's one-fourth of one yard. See? So how many pieces will she have? So we can see here that there's eight of them, but if we didn't have a picture, which you could do if you have to solve a problem, we know drawing a picture can help, we would do the two yards divided by the one-fourth yard pieces. We write the two as an improper fraction as a two over a one, now we have 2 over 1 divided by 1 fourth. Then we change that division sign to a multiplication sign and flip this fraction around to 4 over 1. And now we just multiply the numerator straight across and multiply the denominator straight across. We get 8 over 1, which simplifies to 8 pieces, which we can see. There's 4 and 4. There's 8 pieces. See? That makes sense. Okay. Now we have 8 and 1 fourth divided by 4. The first thing we have to do is convert these to improper fractions. We cannot do this with whole numbers. You can't say that we're going to just divide the 8 by 4 and then the 1 fourth by 4. It's easier and better and works if we turn these into improper fractions. So if you remember how to do this, we do the whole number times the denominator. 8 times 4 is 32. Then we add the numerator. So that's 33 and we put it over the denominator we had. So we have 33 fourths. This, we can just write over a 1 to make it an improper fraction. Any whole number written with 1 as a denominator equals that whole number. So now we have 33 fourths divided by 4 over 1. And we turn this into a multiplication sign, and we flip him around. So now we have 30, 33 fourths times 1 fourth. We multiply straight across, we get 33 over 16, 4 times 4 is 16, and how many 16s are in 33? you got to be careful here because if you use your calculator and 
type in your calculator 33 divided by 16, which this is a little division problem. The problem is your calculator is going to give you a decimal answer, and you need to find a fractional answer. So it might be easier to just say that 16 can fit into 33 two times because 16 plus 16 is 32. So from 32 to 33, we have one little 16th left over, so that's 2 and 1 16th, okay? So be careful doing these on the calculator. You're going to end up with a decimal answer, okay? We have 36 divided by 3 fourths. We turn the 36 into a 36 over 1, and we flip this around and put a multiplication sign there. So now we have 36 over 1 times 4 thirds instead of 3 fourths. See that? And cross-canceling, we have 1 3 here and 12 3's here. So that becomes a 12. That becomes a 1. Now we can multiply straight across. 12 times 4 is 48. 1 times 1 is 1. We quickly get the answer without having to reduce too much. You could solve this by doing 36 times 4 over 1 times 3 is 3, but you're going to have a lot of reducing to do. If you cross-cancel, it's going to go quicker. You'll have more time for other problems, okay? Bob's book is 294 pages long. If he reads 10 and a half pages each day, how many days will it take for him to finish reading the book? So we take the 294. It's got to be split into sections of 10 and a half. And however many those are, that's how many days it's going to take. So we do 294 divided by 10 and a half. We write it as a fraction with a one denominator. This is 10 times 2 is 20, plus that numerator 1 is 21 halves. We write it as an improper fraction. We remove the division sign and put a multiplication sign and flip this one around. So it's 2 21st. We can do this quickly on a calculator. 294 times 2 is 588. 1 times 21 is 21. And we just do 588 divided by 21. We get a 28. You can also do cross-canceling. You could say, well, 294, when we were back up here, 294 divided by 21 to see if it comes out evenly. There's one of these. There's 121 here, and there's 14 21s in 294. Now you can just do 14 times 2 is 28 over 1 times 1 is 1 and get the 28. Either way, it's 28 days to read the book. So whichever way you're more comfortable with, whichever way is going to give you the right answer on the test, on the GED test, do it. Okay? Try to save yourself some time, but do whichever way you know in your heart that you can get the right answer. Okay? Okay, Dave uses one-fourth pound of butter for each batch of his cookie recipe. How many batches can he make with two and a half pounds of butter? So it's one-fourth for each batch, but he's got two and a half pounds. So maybe there's a bake sale or something going on that he needs to make as many batches as he can. So what we do is we take the two and a half pounds and we divide it into one-fourth little increments. We want to see how many of these can fit into here. We turn this into an improper fraction. 2 times 2 is 4, plus the numerator 1 is 5, so we have 5 halves, and it's going to be divided by that 1 fourth. We flip this around to be 4 over 1 and put the multiplication sign there. Now we can go straight across, or we can cross cancel. We have a 2 here, and we have two twos and a 4, so that can be canceled out as a 1 and that as a 2. See? Now we can do 5 times 2 is 10 over 1 times 1 is 1. And we see he'll get 10 batches of cookies. Okay. Now, how many full batches of cookies can he make if he has 3 and a third pounds of butter? So now we do 3 and a third divided by 1 fourth. This is 3 times 3 is 9 plus that one, denominator, one numerator is a 10. So we have 10 thirds. It's divided by 1 fourth and... We change this to multiplication and flip this around to be 4 over 1. Now we can just do 10 times 4 is 40 over 3 times 1 is 3. That'll give him 13 and a third batches. But it says how many full batches, see? So the wording is really important. You've got to make sure you're answering exactly what it's asking of you, okay? So the answer is not 13 and a third. It wants to know full batches. The answer is 13 full batches because that one-third batch won't count, okay? 
he just won't use that butter and he'll have some left over, okay? But the answer is 13. Tala bought a container of 225 ounces of juice for her party. If each party cup holds six and one fourth ounce, how many party cups will she fill? So we take the 225 and we need to divide it by six and one fourth. That'll tell us how many party cups her juice will give her, okay? So we do the 225 over a one to write it as an improper fraction. We change this to an improper fraction by doing six times four is 24, plus that one numerator is 25 over that denominator, 25 fourths. We need to change this to multiplication and flip him around. So now we've got 225 times four over one times 25 is 25. Now you could cross cancel this way because there's nine 25s and 225, but if it's gonna help you, just go straight across like we do when we multiply fractions. You get nine over, 900 over 25, get your calculator and put 900 divided by 25 because remember the little division problems, you're gonna get 36 cups, okay? If you had cross canceled, there's 125 here and there's nine 25s up here then you could do nine times four is 36 over one times one is one and get the 36, okay? I've got one last one. What if you've got two mixed numbers? So now it says if one and an eighth yard of fabric is needed to make a pillow, how many pillows can be made with 11 and one fourth yards? So now we've got two mixed numbers and we need to do division. So we have to realize what we're starting out with. We're starting out with 11 and 1 fourth yards, and we need to break it up into 1 and 1 eighth yard parts so that we can make a pillow with each of those 1 and 1 eighth parts, okay? So we've got 11 and 1 fourth that's going to be divided by 1 and 1 eighth. We turn these into improper fractions. 11 times 4 is 44, plus the one numerator is 45, and it's going to be over that 4 denominator, 45 fourths. 1 times 8 is 8, plus that 1 is a 9, we have 9 eighths. Turn that into multiplication, flip this around as 8 ninths instead of 9 eighths, and we can either go straight across and multiply 45 times 8 over 4 times 9, or we can cross cancel. We get a 9 here and a 45, and if you know your multiplication tables, you know 9 times 5 is 45. So we can cross this out as a 1, and cross this out because there's 5 9's here, we have a 4 and an 8 going this way. We have one 4 here and two 4s here. We can cross this out as a 1 and that as a 2. Now we don't have to reduce so much. We can just do 5 times 2 is 10 over 1 times 1. That's 10 pillows. See? You could do it straight across this way and figure out what 45 times 8 is and divide it by the 36 that the 4 times 9 equals and you'd still come up with 10. See? So whether this way is easier to go straight across for you or cross canceling is easier, do whichever way you need to pass this test, okay? So the dividend has to be written first. Remember that, okay? And remember to change mixed numbers to fractions when you're multiplying or dividing. It's going to make your life easy, okay? And you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 95. If you do it and everything's fine, I'll see you next lesson. If you have some trouble, try watching this video again because I did lots of examples. And go to the description and watch these videos for grade 5, grade 6, and our previous GED math videos. These will help you, okay? Right at your fingertips, just a click away. It's all of these videos. And when you see a lot of videos in my list like this, get some scratch paper and write them down because they may not be linked to each other. If you go to 8.1, you're going to be in the playlist, and it should go to the very next video. But if you skip around, you may not have a link to the next one once you're inside of these. So write them down, okay? And then these will be linked in this video too, okay? So our next video is Estimating with Fractions. It's going to be Lesson 7E. And I hope you do well on the skill focus. I... I hope I gave enough examples here for dividing fractions and mixed numbers that you could fully understand what's going on, all right? 
So I'll see you next time, and we'll do some estimation with fractions. Bye.